Jenny with Roots and Wings Furniture and today I am going to show you how to strip and stain the top of a dresser. We are going to work on this because we get lots of questions about how to properly strip wood and listen, stripper is messy and I hate using it. So I'm going to show you the sanding method at stripping down to raw wood and then we are going to use water-based wood stain um, to stain the top of this. I love water-based wood stain. It's great. It's a lot safer to use and it's come a long way since they first invented it. So let's get started. Let me show you what we're going to use. This is an old dresser and the top of this, like I say, we are just going to strip it down um, and restain it. It is very scratched up, so the finish should come off pretty easily. I am gonna use my pad sander. I like to use a quarter pad sander and I start with 120 grit sandpaper. Do, um, if you have a solid piece of wood and you think it's gonna be harder to get down through, start with your 80 grit. Just be careful if you're using 80 grit that you don't have a veneer top. Now a veneer is a really thin piece of wood, less than a quarter of an inch. And you can usually look at the very edge of your piece. And if you notice a thin strip of wood, you might have a veneer. You don't wanna use 80 grit on a veneer because you can really quickly sand down through it. We don't wanna do that. So I like to start with a 120. If it's not moving fast enough, we'll move up to an 80 grit. If it's going okay, we'll strip it with the 120 and then come down and smooth it out with 220. So I've got that loaded up on my pad sander. I'm working in my garage and so another little trick I wanna show you is I like to hook up my pad sander to my shop vac. Um, the hose just fits right in the back here. It collects all the dust. It really reduces the amount of dust in the air. I've got a special bag in my shop vac that takes all the dust and I can just throw it away when it's full. So that's what we are using since we're inside. Always work with a good amount of ventilation. Um, and if you've got anything you're worried about possibly being lead paint or super old, wear a mask, a respirator, so you are safe. So we are just gonna get started with this. It's gonna be loud, um, but you can see the process. We always move along with the grain um, and stop periodically and change your sandpaper. If you feel like it's not working as well, just get yourself a new piece of sandpaper and then keep on going. So let's get started. For a full supply list of everything you will need to create this awesome finish, check out the description below this video. I did move up to the 80 grit just to really cut through the finish that was on there. So that's what you saw. You saw it go a lot faster that way. Um, but once you get it all cleaned up with the 80 grit, we're gonna go over it with 120 and that will smooth out any imperfections in the wood. Uh, it'll just give it a nice smooth finish. Now I said something, uh, I made a mistake in what I said earlier. When we're using water-based stain, we don't wanna go any lower of a grit, what's really higher of a grit than 120. If your wood gets too smooth, the water-based stain won't have anything to really grip to and sit, it'll just sit on top and it'll wipe it right off. So while with oil-based stain, it really soaks in, you would go up to the 220 to make it nice and smooth with oil-based. But with water-based, we're gonna stay at the 120 grit. It's gonna give it a little bit of grit. Still turns out like a super smooth finish, um, but that allows the water-based wood stain to really soak in um, and give it a good hold. So let me go over this. It'll just be a quick sand with the 120 to get it nice and smoothed out, and then we'll be ready to stain. Okay. 
Okay, now that we've got this piece sanded, we're just gonna dust it off. All I'm gonna use for dusting is a damp paper towel. Now this is gonna help us in two ways. Not only is it gonna clean it off and get any dust off of the piece, it's also going to help even out our water-based stain. So we're gonna just kind of give this an even overall wipe down. And that little tiny bit of water is a little trick to getting your stain settle in more evenly. I'm gonna use my very favorite combination of stain on this piece, and that is a mix of half walnut and half antique oak. These again are both water-based wood stains. They're from General Finishes. All I do is just mix them in a little container, save your kitchen containers for things like this, um, half and half ratio, and then I'm gonna use a stain pad for an application. There are several different ways you can apply this stain. Anything from a chip brush, you can brush it on, you could even use a roller if you wanted to roll it on. A rag with a water-based stain doesn't work super well because um, it doesn't get enough on there. We need to make sure we're getting enough product on there to really even out our finish. So stain pad has been my new favorite tool. Um, and then always wear gloves. Let's get this mixed up. to take much. Now the water-based stain is what is called a semi-gel stain. That means it's not covering as much as a gel stain. It's still allowing you to see some grain through, but it does have some coverage to it. Also keep in mind that depending on how nice your wood is, if you want to hide imperfections, you want to go with a darker color. If you've got a really pretty piece of wood and you really want the grain to show through, then stay with a lighter color. I love this color because it's really nice and neutral. It's not too red, it's not too brown, and it goes with most paint colors just perfectly. Now we're getting a lot of product on there and then you want to keep what's called a wet edge. So this area here, where I'm gonna hop over to the other side, we're gonna keep that wet. We're not gonna wipe it back too much. And that'll help us get a nice, even coat of the stain. This stuff dries really quick, so you do need to move a little bit fast. Now where it meets in the middle, we just apply more stain. See how nice that blended? There's no middle seam or anything like that right there. So this is finished. Let's talk about dry time. It's only gonna take two to four hours to dry before you can start the top coat process. So this stain application is much faster than using oil-based stain where you need to wait for 24 hours. So we're just gonna let this sit. It's really not smelly. I don't smell anything and I'm standing right next to it. It's also water-based, so it's washable. If you use a brush, you can just wash it out. You don't have to worry about throwing um, anything that has stain on it away. So it's a really nice, really good product. I love it. Um, so I'm just gonna let this sit, and then we will be back once it's dry to start our top coating process. Okay, the stain is all dry, and we are ready to start top coating. I am going to use General Finish's High Performance Top Coat in the flat finish. This is a water-based polyacrylic, and it does a great job sealing the piece, being a really clear finish, a really crisp, clean finish, um, and it dries really nice. The nice thing about using water-based is that it will dry in two to four hours, so we can continue on with our process here fairly quickly. Over the water-based stain, we could use an oil-based finish, um, but that would take 24 hours to dry, so it would take longer to continue our finishing process. So this is what I'm going to use. I am going to use my Purdy brush to apply this finish. This is the Purdy XL Cub. These are my favorite brushes and I use them for everything, including the top coat. 
They have really nice bristles that don't leave a lot of brush strokes, so it levels out and finishes really nice. Do be sure that you are using a fairly new brush, not a brush that has a lot of paint. Um, sometimes they get paint down in the bottom and that can end up in your final finish. So do be aware of that, but that is what I'm gonna use. The top coat in the can has a milky, almost a blue finish or look to it. Just stir it really well. Always stir, don't shake your top coat. Just give it a nice stir and then we will apply it. Now another common mistake is to not use enough top coat or to over brush it. So we are going to use a lot of top coat and you saw there I just put my brush in there and almost let it drip onto the surface. That's how much you wanna use. We spread it out and get a nice even coat over the whole thing. You can kind of go over it maybe once and then you let it self level and do its job and it will give you a really nice finish. That's one of the most common mistakes with this product is just not using enough and over brushing. And when we over brush, we get streaks and marks that nobody likes. And just like that, we've got our first layer finished. My standard on a wood top is to do three layers of top coat. So that's going to mean we're just going to let this dry. I would say two to four hours under normal humidity and temperature conditions. We'll give it a light sanding and then we will apply a coat in the exact same way. We'll do that three times for three total coats over our stain. And then we will have a nice sealed durable top. So I'm going to let this dry and I will be back in a little bit to show you how to sand it between coats. Okay, the first layer of top coat is dry, so we are ready to give a little bit of sanding in between coats here. I'm gonna use 400 grit sandpaper. That is the sandpaper I always use and it gives a really nice finish. There is some roughness to this now, so we sanded it down smooth, we've added our water-based top coat, and the water-based top coat brings up the grain a little bit, so it's pretty rough. So the 400 is gonna knock down the grain again and make it really nice and smooth to the touch. Do be careful, since we have water-based stain on here, the water-based stain doesn't penetrate as deeply. So as I'm sanding, just be really gentle with it. You can pretty quickly and easily sand down to raw wood again, which is obviously not what we wanna do. So I'm gonna go over this again, like I say, really, really gently, 400 grit just by hand. So that is all that it takes. And you just use your other hand to feel any rough spots. Otherwise it's just a really quick, really light sanding. Okay, and again, just using a damp, not wet, just a damp rag to dust off the piece. And then we will apply the next layer of top coat in exactly the same way we did the first. I do wash my brush between top coat. I do not keep the, uh, the brush wet, even if I'm coming right back to it. I wash the brush. I use a clean, dry brush every time. All right, there we go. There is coat number two. Again, just let it dry, give it a couple hours. Then you would come back and sand again, just as we did, and do the final coat of top coat. Now, if you are painting the base of the piece, this would be the time that I would feel okay going ahead and painting the bottom. I always choose to sand and stain the top first. In case I get a little messy with the paint or a little drip splashes up or something, it's, this is already covered in top coat. It's really easy to get any little paint or um, any messiness off of the top at this point. So I'm gonna let this dry. I'll do my third layer of top coat and then I will show you the final result. Thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to check out my website, rootsandwingsfurniture.com for more painting tips and tricks and DIY. Also, subscribe to this channel so that you won't miss a thing. Click the button below.